A group of young people is celebrating Christmas Eve. A girl named Georgia is telling her friend about her pregnancy when suddenly After the extremely loud signal, the android servants go violent. The friends manage to fight off the androids, but it seems they are not the only ones facing this problem. Smartphones suddenly exploded fatally hurting their users and leading to an AI takeover. Nine months have passed since the android uprising began. During this time, Georgia and her boyfriend Sam have to hide in the forest before going to sleep. The future parents try to come up with a name for the baby. Georgia is sure that they are expecting a girl, while Sam insists it will be a baby boy. What name would you give to the baby in the place of the heroes? Suddenly, their argument is interrupted by a suspicious noise, and Sam goes to check if everything is fine. After making sure that no one else is around, they fall asleep. The next morning, despite Georgia feeling unwell, she and Sam are determined to continue their journey. My back hurts. My boobs hurt. My feet hurt. They plan to reach a safe place as soon as possible and cautiously make their way through the forest, avoiding encounters with androids. After some time, Sam and Georgia come across a military camp. The soldiers, noticing the uninvited guests, order them to drop their backpacks and raise their hands. They thoroughly search and scan the young people, making sure they are not androids, and then let them into the camp. Georgia tells Dr. Howe that she and Sam wanted to get to New York, but they had to turn back because of an EMP. Dr. Howe explains that after the electromagnetic pulse radius subsided, a new wave of androids destroyed the soldiers, and that was the end of New York City. Georgia informs him that they are now heading to Boston, but Dr. Howe warns them that they can't go straight there because it's surrounded by no man's land. They could try going by sea, but it's too risky due to Georgia's pregnancy. What? Again? Georgia is thrilled to hear the news about giving birth in the camp, but soon she remembers that Sam wants to reach Boston before the baby is born. Georgia shows Dr. Howe a brochure that claims families with children under one year old have the right to sail to Asia. However, Dr. Howe disappoints her, stating that only moms with infants are allowed on board due to supply issues. Do you think this is discrimination against men? Share your thoughts in the comments. The girl is confused, but Dr. Howe distracts her from worrisome thoughts and suggests listening to the baby's heartbeat. Meanwhile, Sam approaches a patrol soldier and asks if anyone is going to Boston. The soldier says that no one goes there as the city is surrounded by no man's land. The soldier explains that despite excellent defense and the presence of EMP, everything could collapse at any moment. If the military uses EMP, all electrical devices will be disabled, and the androids will easily take over Boston. After hearing the soldier's concerns, Sam tells him that he and Georgia want to go to Korea because it's safer there. He asks the soldier if the evacuation of people from the country is ongoing. The soldier disdainfully responds that he has no idea as he has no intention of running away. I got a family, man. Who doesn't? In the evening, Georgia tries to convince Sam to stay in the camp until the baby is born. But Sam is sure that it will be much harder for them to go through no man's land with a baby unnoticed. However, Georgia insists that she will go only if Sam finds a safe way to cross. Concerned, she tells Sam that he might not be allowed into Korea, and they might have to part ways. Sam thinks that in that case, Georgia and the baby should go without him, and he will figure something out. But such a response upsets Georgia. She blames him for wanting to abandon her to fate. Sam believes it's the right thing to do and tries to calm her down. I am allowed to have emotions. This is not me being hormonal. At night, Sam goes to the military again and approaches the patrol soldier, persuading him to take them to Boston. However, the soldier says that if Sam wants to go, he must fight him and win. Sam is willing to do anything for his family and accepts the challenge. In the morning, soldiers wake up Georgia and take her to the captain's tent. The captain informs her that Sam got into a fight with the patrol soldier, and now the soldier has a broken skull and lost an eye. Georgia can't believe that Sam could do something like that. But the captain won't tolerate such behavior from a guest who interferes with the military's fight against the enemy. He insists that the couple must leave his base immediately. Shocked, Georgia reminds the captain that she is pregnant, but he doesn't care at all. She pleads with the captain, but he only threatens to inform other bases not to take them in. Georgia and Sam head to the exit. Dr. Howe gives Georgia the necessary medication and explains how to cut the umbilical cord. 
women have been giving birth since way before people started calling themselves doctors. Meanwhile, Sam manages to persuade the soldier to give him back the weapon they need for their family's protection. Sam apologizes to Georgia and explains that he only wanted to arrange a trip to Boston, but Georgia is still very upset with him. After a long and difficult journey through the forest, the couple stumbles upon an abandoned house. Sam gives Georgia the revolver, and he takes a mashie and cautiously enters the house, making sure it's safe inside. Sam invites Georgia to come in as well. Inside, Sam goes in search of mattresses and finds a Polaroid camera. Accidentally taking a selfie, he discovers that the camera can take another picture. He decides to take the camera with them to capture their happy family moments after the baby is born. Regaining her composure, the couple discusses the route to Boston. The safe route will take about two weeks, but the direct road will only take a few days. However, walking straight is very dangerous as any careless move can attract the androids. Georgia wants to give birth to the baby in the house. They can gather strength here before the long journey, and the house also has supplies. I think it'll ever go back to normal. No. In the morning, Georgia goes to the yard and finds Sam fixing the off-road motorcycle. Sam explains that they shouldn't stay in no man's land for long, and with the bike they can reach Boston by evening. Besides, Sam is afraid that the newborn baby will cry constantly and the androids will easily detect them. Georgia doubts Sam's plan but he promises that he can protect them and everything will be fine. Sam and Georgia are finally ready to set off. Sam hands Georgia the revolver so that she can cover them from behind if needed, and he starts the engine. After a few hours of traveling through the forest, Sam and Georgia stop by the river to take a break. Suddenly, Georgia notices an android in the distance. Terrified, she informs Sam, and the android starts running straight towards them. Sam and Georgia quickly get on the bike and speed away. They manage to shake off the first pursuer, but another android shows up on their way. However, the number of androids keeps increasing and drones join in the pursuit. Suddenly, Sam stops and tells Georgia to go back to the river while he tries to distract the androids. He takes the revolver from her and promises to find her soon. Exhausted, Georgia hides from the drones and cautiously makes her way back to the river. Suddenly, a man who introduces himself as Arthur appears in front of her and asks her not to make any noise. Arthur informs Georgia that they have already taken Sam and offers his help to the frightened girl. Georgia agrees to follow Arthur, and they soon reach his van hidden deep in the forest. As Georgia looks around beside the van, she asks how Arthur manages to hide from the androids, but he doesn't answer right away. Arthur decides to tell Georgia about Carol Capex play, where the robot uprising ended in the extinction of humanity. Arthur believes that the creation of expensive android servants by humans marked the beginning of the end. He reveals that he was involved in the development of the androids, and finally answers Georgia's main question. I'm alive because I know how they think. Georgia wonders what went wrong on the day of the attack. But Arthur avoids giving a direct answer, claiming that everything went wrong from the moment the androids were created. After a while, Georgia experiences labor pains again, but she remains determined to go in search of Sam. However, Arthur advises her to forget about him. Arthur explains that it is love and emotional ties that will destroy humanity. Androids have no attachments or self-preservation instinct, so they are willing to sacrifice themselves for their goal. Therefore, if Georgia wants to live, she should focus on saving herself and not think about other people. Soon, Arthur remembers that Georgia was heading to Boston and promises to get her there safe and sound. He shows her a special camouflage designed for conflicts in Eastern Europe. Androids can detect human ultraviolet and thermal radiation, but this innovative camouflage prevents them from recognizing it. However, even with the camouflage, androids can still sense humans, and they are aware of its existence. Georgia wants to use the camouflage to find Sam, but Arthur is not willing to take the risk. It doesn't matter either way, I'm gonna go get him. Understanding that Georgia won't give up, Arthur still takes her to the house where androids are holding kidnapped humans. He hands her a second camouflage vest for Sam and warns them that they need to quietly leave the building and cover four miles to reach the edge of no man's land. Georgia cautiously sneaks into the house and ensures that the androids don't notice her. After passing through several corridors, she finally finds Sam. He is tragically chained to the wall, and his legs are broken. Another prisoner is in the room as well, and Georgia asks him not to make any noise to avoid attracting the attention of the androids. However, the android eventually hears their voices and enters the room. Sam tries to distract the android and taunts him, but the android fiercely steps on Sam's broken legs and then leaves. Georgia rushes to Sam again 
frees him and puts the camouflage vest on him. However, the second prisoner starts screaming when he realizes that Georgia won't help him. The couple tries to leave the building as quickly as possible, but the androids chase after them. Suddenly, Arthur appears at the exit and skillfully deals with the enemies. During the shootout, Georgia realizes that her labor is about to start. Arthur helps the weakened couple reach his van and sets off. Georgia loses consciousness due to excruciating pain and wakes up later in a Boston hospital. The doctor reassures the distressed girl and informs her that Sam is by her side and that they have a healthy baby boy. Georgia was found unconscious during labor, so the doctors had to perform a cesarean section. It's a nice change, having some life here. Arthur managed to take the couple to Boston through the checkpoint, but he soon shut down and is now also resting in the hospital. A happy Georgia holds her baby in her arms and approaches Sam, but the joy is soon overshadowed by terrible news. Both of Sam's legs had to be amputated. Sam remains optimistic and states that as soon as they reach Korea, they will immediately order him prosthetic legs. Sam suggests naming their son Forrest, and Georgia agrees. Soon, a military officer arrives in the hospital room to ask Georgia a few questions. He inquires about how they met Arthur, and Georgia describes their encounter in the woods and the camouflage that helped her save Sam. However, the military officer insists that there is no camouflage technology that can truly hide a person from an android, as the government would have widely utilized such technology if it existed. The girl tries to convince the officer that she really managed to pass by the androids unnoticed, but he demands that she tells him the truth. Suddenly, Georgia starts analyzing Arthur's words and behavior and realizes that he is also an android, skillfully posing as a human. I think I made a mistake. Concerned, the military officer decides to check on Arthur, but finds the nurse's body on his bed. Soon, gunshots and screams are heard outside the hospital room. Georgia jumps off the bed, but the post-operative stitches begin to come apart. Overcoming the pain, she takes her son in her arms and tries to wake up Sam. And suddenly, she realizes that Arthur plans to disable the EMP allowing the androids to take over Boston. Sam doesn't come to his senses, and Georgia, with her baby, sits in a wheelchair and heads to the basement. Driving through the fierce firefight, she miraculously manages to survive. Georgia grabs the weapons and gate keys from the dead soldiers, but suddenly, Arthur appears behind her. The android tells her that today Boston will fall, and she can't stop them. Arthur demands Georgia to disable the EMP, threatening to harm her baby otherwise. But the girl opens fire on Arthur, and after numerous injuries, he finally shuts down. Soon, a crowd of androids approaches Georgia, but she manages to activate the EMP, causing all the androids to malfunction, plunging the city into darkness. Georgia returns to the hospital room, and the next morning, she and Sam finally take a family selfie. Then Georgia and Sam head to the harbor to finally sail to Korea. A Korean officer, making sure they are humans, informs them that he will only take the baby. In desperation, Georgia begs to take them all, but the officer explains that adults need assistance, work, and housing, and Korea cannot provide all of that. The baby is simple, but you're not. Sam realizes he won't survive, and Georgia can't protect the baby alone, so he suggests giving the baby a chance and sending him to Korea. Overwhelmed with grief, Georgia signs the necessary documents and writes a letter to her son, telling him how much she loves him. She says goodbye to her son and asks him to find a loving family. Sobbing in despair, Georgia watches her son sail towards a new life. Sam doesn't make it. Georgia burns his selfie but can't bring herself to destroy the family photo. Sometime later, she meets some military personnel who offer to go with them to Portland, where a new base is being built. Georgia accepts the offer and hopes for the best. What do you think? Can humanity suppress the android uprising and return to normal life? Share your thoughts in the comments, like, and subscribe to the channel. And remember that the best comments will be featured in the next video. And here is the best from the previous one. See you.